a victory for international law, for human rights, and above all, for justice. This follows the unprecedented action taken by South Africa to take another country to the international court. On the 29th of December, 2023, South Africa filed an application instituting proceedings against the State of Israel for the violence it has unleashed on the people of the Gaza Strip, arguing that Israel was in breach of its obligations under the Convention. South Africa had earlier condemned the 7th October 2020 attack by Hamas and other groups that resulted in the deaths of many Israelis and the taking of hostages. The court, in its judgment, affirmed South Africa's right to take Israel to court, even though it is not a party to the conflict in Gaza. The ICJ is the principal judicial organ of the United Nations, has handed down a ruling that the State of Israel should immediately implement a set of provisional measures to prevent any further acts of genocide in Gaza and to desist from such acts and to take effective measures to prevent the destruction and ensure the preservation of evidence relating to acts of genocide. As the South African government, we welcome the decision of the International Court of Justice. We note the court's statement that it is acutely aware of the extent of the human tragedy that is unfolding in the region and is deeply concerned about the continuing loss of life and human suffering and that the catastrophic humanitarian situation in the Gaza Strip is at serious risk of deteriorating further before the court renders its final judgment. We welcome the measures that the court ordered by majority decision, ruling that the Israeli military should not commit acts of genocide against Palestinians. Israel should take all measures to prevent and punish incitement to genocide. Furthermore, it should take immediate and effective measures to allow basic services and humanitarian assistance in the form of food, medication, and other basic necessities to Gaza. And it should also preserve evidence of what is happening in Gaza. And lastly, it should submit a report within a month on all measures taken to give effect to the ICJ order within one month. This order is binding on Israel and must be respected by all states that are party to the Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide. We expect Israel as a self-proclaimed democracy and a state that respects the rule of law to abide by the measures handed down by the International Court of Justice. After more than half a century of occupation, dispossession, oppression, and apartheid, the Palestinian people's cries for justice have been heeded by an eminent organ of the United Nations. Today, Israel stands before the international community, its crimes against the Palestinians laid bare. Since October last year, the people of Gaza have been the victims of bombardment and strikes from land, sea, and air. Homes, refugee camps, and entire neighborhoods have been destroyed and not even schools and hospitals and religious places have been spared. The people of Gaza have been deprived of electricity, fuel, food and medical supplies. 
According to the United Nations, more than 25,000 people killed during Israel's war with Hamas. And we hold the view that this has been collective punishment against Palestinians in the Gaza Strip. Among the dead are relief workers, United Nations staff who have died in their hundreds, as well as journalists who have also died in their hundreds. More than 16,000 of the dead are women and children. In October 2023, the United Nations Children's Fund said, Gaza has become a graveyard for thousands of children, born and unborn. According to the United Nations, thousands of children were killed in just the first three weeks of the current conflict. As South Africa argued in its application to the International Court of Justice, the high civilian death toll and the sheer scale of the devastation that has resulted from Israel's response to the 7th October attacks is vastly disproportionate to any claim by Israel that it has been acting in self-defense. We have called Israel attacks on Gaza genocidal acts, acts for which Israel should and must be held accountable. Today, the International Court of Justice has vindicated us. The court has concluded that pursuant to Article 9 of the Convention, it has jurisdiction to adjudicate the effect of the order that the ICJ has granted today is that there is a plausible case of genocide. This marks an important first in our quest to secure justice for the people of Gaza. Some have that we should mind our own business and not get involved in the affairs of other countries. Others have said it was not our place, and yet it is very much our place as the people of Atambo and many others. Others were jailed like the father of our democracy, Nelson Mandela, and many others. That, for us, was the face of apartheid. We as South Africans will not be passive bystanders and watch the crimes that were visited upon us being perpetrated upon other people elsewhere. We stand on the side of freedom for all. We stand on the side of justice. 30 years ago, following our first democratic elections, President Nelson Mandela declared, let there be justice for all. Let there be peace for all. Never, never, and never again shall it be that this beautiful land will again experience the oppression of one by another. And so we say again today, never, never, and never again shall it be that acts of genocide are perpetrated with impunity as we, the international community look on. We firmly believe that following this judgment, there should now be a more considered effort towards a ceasefire and negotiations should commence on a permanent two-state solution for enabling Israel and Palestine to live side by side as independent states, the Palestinians having attained their self-determination. As South Africa, we thank all in the international community, and there have been millions of people around the world who have supported our application, including a number of countries who have declared their intention to be part of our application to the International Court of Justice. We will not waver in our commitment to the Palestinians and their quest for self-determination. Our own painful history 
obliges us to do no less. We thank the International Court of Justice for upholding its role of achieving justice, promoting peace, preventing genocide, and holding those responsible for genocide to be accountable. It is our earnest hope and wish that this court order paves the way for an end to this crisis and this painful experience that Palestinians are going through. And we hope for an end to the terrible loss of life and hardship and for the crucial first steps to be taken towards reconciliation and a just lasting peace. Lastly, I'd like to extend my gratitude to our lawyers, the lawyers who presented our case to the International Court, and of course, a gratitude to our Minister of Justice, 